Life Audio. Christian Parent Crazy World with Catherine Seegers is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational faith affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome to Christian Parent Crazy World, the podcast that tackles tough topics to help you be a godly parent in an ungodly world. I am your host, Katherine Seegers, and in today's episode, we will tackle this fascinating question. Can our words change the future? Mm, Yep, we're going to get a little prophetic in this episode, mamas and papas. We are going to talk about what our words have the power to do. Scripture tells us that life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. And we're going to investigate this topic today. So we are continuing in a series on truth that we started way back in episode 23. Let me refresh your memory briefly to catch up to speed since some time has elapsed. And we have been on quite a journey here with a, with a couple of detours. In episode 23... We discussed how central truth is to the Christian faith. It is foundational. It is Christ's very purpose for coming to the earth. Then in episode 24, we talked about how powerful words are. God created the entire universe through the spoken word, which is precisely why the enemy wants to attack truth by redefining words. And his favorite thing to do is to take a word and make it mean its opposite. Mm -hmm. He gets a, a triple scrabble score when he does that, but not to worry. He doesn't win the game. A little word shall fell him. As the old hymn says, that is the word of God. Then in episode 25, we discussed another tactic that the enemy loves to use with words. He loves to deny truth by denying universals in reality. Yep, yep, we got all brainy in that episode and broke down some philosophy. We took a long, hard look at nominalism. A philosophical doctrine that says that there is no such thing as as universal truth, so there is no such thing as universals in reality. And, And that, mamas and papas, is how we've ended up with 50 plus genders and drag queen story hour. Then we took a little bit of a detour in episode 26 to bring some much needed truth to our perspective in parenting. That was, you know, it was a bit of an outlier in this series, but I simply could not wait to give you that information. It was, that was such an important episode. It is foundational to our philosophy and theology on parenting. Please, please go back. I don't, I don't ask you to listen to every, well, I do actually, please do listen to every episode. But if you, if you, if you're going to miss one, don't miss that one. Okay. Because it was so important. The title of that one was what every parent needs to know about the prodigal child. But even if you don't have a prodigal child, you need to listen to that episode because in it, I go over the four stages of parenting and discuss what is our role as parents in each of those stages, critically important information, and and I share what is the most important question you could ever ask your child. Yeah, you don't want to miss that one. And then finally, I, I gave you this wacky bonus episode last time with an interview from Spark Media, that conference that I went to, which hopefully helped you to get to know me and this podcast better, and I hope it made you laugh. That is the truth trajectory we have been on in the last five episodes. Now, in this episode, I want want to go back to the issue of words. There is simply so much to say on this topic. There's more meat on the bone here, folks. So I, I want to offer some important thoughts on the power of our words to affect change in our lives and in our kids' lives and in the world. When our words have the power of truth behind them, God's truth, God's word, and when they are connected to his will, 
(laughs) Things can change radically. I'm going to share with you some highlights from a really fascinating interview I listened to recently. This interview was with a guy named Adam Curry. Um, I'll tell you more about him in a bit. Fascinating, fascinating guy. Not a believer. And the fact that he is not a Christian, but he sees how powerful, dare I say, (laughs) prophetic our words are, how they can affect change in our lives and in the lives around us and in the world. Well, it's, it's simply astounding. It's remarkable. I just, I, you know, I just love it when a prominent non-believer stumbles upon a powerful spiritual truth and he isn't afraid to preach it. Uh, then I'm going to give you a, a very current application of how words are being used by our leaders to confuse and distort truth. As Mr. Curry said in that interview, to cast spells on people. And then I'm going to follow that with an example when words spoken at the right time with authority change history. And finally, after that, I'm going to give you a a pep talk to wrap this episode up because we could all use a good pep talk in our parenting every now and then. Honestly, I could use one every day. Anyways, so that's the plan for today's episode of Christian Parent Crazy World. So let's get started. Yes, today we are going to continue talking about the importance of words, how they can affect change in our lives, in our kids' lives, and in the world. I've discussed this before, particularly, I think it was episode 14, How to Battle for Your Kids in Prayer. In that episode, I share my testimony of how the the imperative commanding prayers, which I taught you about in episode 13, that was four types of prayer every believer should know. So my husband and I prayed these commanding imperative prayers, and that brought about a miraculous pregnancy at the age of 45 with no fertility drugs or, or in vitro. Mind you, this happened through prayer and, well, you know, natural way. Anyways, uh, but I, you know, I've had quite a few doctors ask me how we got pregnant with that child at such an advanced maternal age. And, and when I told them my story, how that child came through the spoken word through prayer, which you can hear all about that in episode 14, their jaws hit the floor. That is such a testimony to the power of prayer, the power of our words backed with God's purpose and his power and his truth and his authority to change things, to change the future. I also discussed the theology behind praying in the imperative. That was that was episode 13, using our authority to speak commanding prayers. Both episode 13 and 14 really go hand in hand with this one. There will be times in your parenting where you are going to need to take hold of your authority and speak forth commanding prayers over your children. You know, I I do this frequently, like daily over the lives of my kids. My husband and I, we, we bind ungodly influences and we loose godly influences. We bind sickness and we loose healing. We bind lies and we loose truth. That's, that's just how we pray regularly. Today, I, I want to talk about the power of our commanding words from a, a secular perspective, or rather from the perspective of someone who is not a believer. This guy gets it. Like I said, I'm, I'm always fascinated when someone who isn't a Christian stumbles across a spiritual truth and preaches it. It it almost has more power when it comes from someone who doesn't rely on scripture to see it. He just, he sees the evidence of it in the real world. Now, most of you are probably a, a lot younger than I am. You may not have been around in the early days of MTV. By the way, you know, I'm not advocating that channel in any way. Does it, does it even exist? I, I don't even know if it's still around. But I remember when MTV started back in the early 80s. Prior to that, we had we had Friday night videos. Oh my gosh, I'm so dating myself here. Uh, yeah, every Friday night at 10 p.m., they would show music videos on one of the main stations. And yeah, I, I don't even remember which one. There were like only three, not including PBS. Uh, But then, you know, 
cable started picking up steam and MTV came along and a guy named Adam Curry was a major player on that station. This guy wasn't just some VJ, though. He went on to invent the technology that makes podcasting possible. (laughs) Yeah, he's known as the Podfather. Curry figured out all the complex technical connections that make your iPad or phone work like an old-fashioned transistor radio in order to transmit a podcast. You know, I'll I'll be honest, I really didn't track very well with that part of the interview. (laughs) Suffice to say, this guy is a lot smarter than I am when it comes to technology. Now, mind you, as I said, Adam Curry is not a believer. However, this is so fascinating. He is coming around to believing in good and evil and in God himself as he looks at what's going on in the world right now. He sees this this coordination or, or perhaps more accurately an orchestration of events, of of propaganda and agendas across the spectrum, like, you know, politically and, and geopolitically and socially, culturally, organizationally, medically, scientifically, monetarily, geographically, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the, you know, things are moving in a very disturbing, dare I say, evil direction. Curry, Curry used that term, evil, actually. The secular guy said it. He said that there is no other way to describe what he is seeing happening in the world right now. And it is leading him to believe in a higher power. Because if there is evil, there must be good. There must be an antithesis to this coordinated, orchestrated progression in society. Now, this interview, which was on the Glenn Beck show, by the way, was not about our words or the power of words. It was about these serious, you know, political, geopolitical issues. But Curry stumbles on to something that was really profound. And let me just preface this by saying, again, I do not agree with all of Curry's terminology, the way he defines things. He talks about witchcraft in this interview, which, you know... (laughs) really an interesting claim to make from a guy who who for much of his life didn't even believe in God and is still agnostic. You know, I'd certainly agree with him, though, on many counts. But the way he applies the terms witchcraft and spells, you know, wasn't always accurate in my opinion. But overall, I was struck by, by what this very wise and knowledgeable guy has to say about the power of our words. So uh, Curry and Beck were talking about governmental policies surrounding the pandemic, and I don't want to get into the weeds of all that, but Curry talks about how in our society, leaders across the spectrum, culturally and politically, leaders are casting spells on people. Those were his words. (laughs) And again, I'm like, whoa, that is some really religious language coming from a, you know, a non-religious guy. Maybe he's hyper spiritual, but spells and and, and witchcraft, that's, that's a very serious claim coming from someone who is a Christian, much less someone, you know, who isn't. Specifically though, Curry was referring to some of the directives or mandates that we are getting from our leaders. And this is what he says. He says, quote, These are spells that are being cast upon people. If you look up the definition of a spell, it's words. Basically, you know, just words, spelling, spell. Pay attention because the things people say cast spells on people. Words really do matter. End quote. Wow. Wow. You know, honestly, that that kind of floored me. You know, I I would expect a Christian leader to say something like that, but this guy isn't a Christian and he gets it. Words do have power. They can affect change. They can change the way we think about ourselves and the world. They can affect what we, we say and what we do. They can affect individuals, groups, communities, and entire nations. Words matter. And, of course, as Christians, we know how important words are. As I've talked about in in this series on truth, God created the universe, not by thinking about it or by twitching his nose like Samantha on Bewitched or or by using a magic wand. No, Mm -mm. that's not how he did it. 
God spoke the world into existence through words. Let there be. Dot, dot, dot. Words create reality. And words can destroy it. Words can liberate or they can oppress and imprison. Hmm. So what are words doing in our culture right now? What reality are they creating? Our cultural leaders and many political leaders are saying that, (laughs) I can't even believe this. They're saying that they can't even define what a woman is anymore. Dear me. After all women fought for to gain the right to be to be educated and to, to own property and to vote, now we can't even define what one is? Okay, okay, I just have to go here. This was incredible. This was just mind-boggling. In, in the recent hearings for Katanji Brown Jackson, Senator Marsha Blackburn asked Jackson, a nominee for the Supreme Court, a very simple question. She asked if she could tell us what a woman is. She asked her to define woman, and Jackson declined to answer, stating that that she is, quote, not a biologist. (sighs) Look, you know, okay, look, I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is. I'm not a pediatrician, but I know what a child is. I birthed five of them. You know, I'm not a geologist, but I know what a rock is. I could, you know, go on and on, but you get the picture. Here's the real irony of it all, (laughs) you know. Before he nominated someone, our president said that he was going to nominate a woman to the Supreme Court. And now this woman is poised to sit on the, the highest court of the land, and she cannot even tell us what a woman is. She cannot define the criteria used to pick her. Furthermore, she says that she is not a biologist, but biology tells us that someone with two X chromosomes and, a, and, and certain physical characteristics is a woman, is a female. Everybody, literally everybody knows that. So the woman who was nominated because she is a woman can't define what a woman is. And she tells us to look to biology, which she does not agree with, to define what a woman is. Who's on first? Nobody knows. It may or may not be a woman, but whatever you do, don't ask our leaders because they won't tell you. Because they are not biologists, which is really ironic because they don't agree with biology. Biology tells us what a woman is. They will not. This is the convoluted word maze that our world is preaching. This is the world's logic. This is the world's truth. This is the way the world works to to confuse and cast spells like Curry says to create an alternate reality. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it, mamas and papas. Yeah, yeah, words do have power. You bet they do. They can affirm and advance truth or they can deny it. As godly parents, we need to affirm truth, truth that affirms truth. Reality, no matter how unpopular or countercultural it is, we must. Let me just say if you find yourself agreeing with our culture on issues like gender and sexuality, you need to really examine what you believe and why you believe it. It is so easy to be discouraged as Bible-believing Christians in this post-Christian world where, where blue is red. And up is down. But don't be discouraged, moms and dads. Our words still have power. Truth has power. If it didn't, our culture wouldn't be trying so hard to silence it. They wouldn't refuse to define what has been a very clear definition for thousands of years. What is obvious to the naked eye. Now, I want to get back to this interview between Beck and Curry because they talk about an epic example in history of the power of words to be a force of good in the world. This is this is so encouraging. And I I think we could use some encouragement right about now. This is such a prolific moment in history where words preceded a very godly outcome, which was a total smackdown of the enemy and a liberation of an entire nation. (music) 
So Curry talks about the falling of the Berlin Wall. Most of you, I'm sure, learned in school about the Great Wall that separated East and West Germany for 28 years. From 1961 to 1989, that wall separated a communist nation from a free nation. Well, in 1987, President Ronald Reagan gave a speech right in front of that wall on the free side. And he had this very famous line in the speech that the State Department kept trying to take out of the speech. They told him not to say it. The final version of the speech did not have this line in it. And, and Reagan was under all kinds of pressure not to say it. Nevertheless, undaunted and clearly unadvised, but I would say divinely, prophetically inspired, President Reagan steps up to the mic and delivers this, this brilliant speech. There are 2,703 words in the speech. The world remembers six of them. The six words that weren't supposed to be there. Against the counsel of all of his advisors, but I believe with the breath of God stirring in his lungs, Ronald Reagan says, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you've seen clips of that, of that amazing speech. I, I'm, you know, I'm going to link it. Go watch it again. It's so, so good. Some of us, you know, you know, we may have watched it when it happened, <clears throat> but it was such an epic moment. Something broke in that moment. Something, something happened. There was a, a tectonic shift in the spiritual and in the physical. And 29 months later, the wall that had stood for nearly three decades, that wall came crumbling down. Words have power. Here is what Adam Curry said about that quote from Reagan. He said, quote, words just have power if said in the right way and in the right place. And when it comes from a place of authority, end quote. Wow. Wow. Can I just say that'll preach in any truth filled pulpit in this nation, in the world? Words just have power if said in the right way and in the right place. And when it comes from from a place of authority. Now, if, if you listen to the whole interview, be advised that I do not agree with everything Adam Curry said. Curry called Reagan's quote, you know, witchcraft or a spell because I, you know, I don't think he, he knows what else to call it because he's not a Christian. He, he confuses the difference between a spell and a prophetic utterance from God. He, he, he doesn't really recognize a distinction there because, you know, like I said, he's not a believer. But while he seems to understand and, and believe in the idea of, of good and evil, evil and how, how those forces work through our words. He nails it there. Um, he has no understanding of the difference between a prophetic word from our Heavenly Father and a word from Satan, which could be or would be a spell. He just calls all of these kinds of proclamations spells, no matter who they came from. That isn't the case in my mind, not from my understanding of words in scripture. A lie from the devil, you could call that a spell sent to deceive. But truth from God is not a spell. It is a bondage-breaking, liberating, prophetic word with the power to break chains and set people free. <laughs> the bottom line is this, though. Our words have power for good or for evil. And I, I call this command from Reagan, I call it a prophetic command from the heart of God. I believe it was the will of God, words said in the right way, in the right place, coming from a place of authority, have power. So what's our takeaway, moms and dads? Well, now, now it's time for that little pep talk. Mamas and papas, you have authority in your kids' lives. Now, you know, your kids may be out of the house or close to it. You may be in the counseling stage of parenting, which I talked about in episode 26. And that stage, which starts when your kid, you know, is around 16 or 17, the only advice that really sticks in this, in this stage of parenting is advice that is asked for. That's okay. If your kids don't want your advice, you can still pray. They can't stop you from praying. And you must pray. 
Your words in prayer have authority. They do. Use them. Speak life over your kids. Speak truth. Speak freedom. Speak destiny in prayer. Speak the word of God over your children in prayer. I I have that list of scriptures you can pray over your child if he or she is not walking with the Lord or or if they are. Be proactive. Many of these scriptures are so good for kids who are walking with the Lord too. So, you know, just subscribe on my website and I'll send it right out to you. It's free. And pray those verses over your children. Now, you know, I've recommended Dutch Sheets books on prayer to you before. I'll post some links for you again. One of my biggest takeaways from his books on prayer is this. Dutch says, you have authority over what you have authored. God used you, mom and dad, to author your children. You don't own them. I talked about that in episode 26 as well. But you did author them. And that gives you a unique authority that no one else in the entire world has in your child's life. You have the greatest influence over your children, whether they are under your roof or not, whether they are walking with God or not, whether they are speaking to you or not. You have the greatest influence in your child's life because you authored them. That gives you authority to call things that are not as though they were. That is Romans 4.17. So when you kneel down to pray over your child, remember, you have authority like no one else to pray for God's will to be done in their lives. Moms and dads, get your Ronald Reagan on. Speak to the ungodly walls in your kids' lives and tear them down in prayer. Speak to the ungodly walls in your family and and in your marriage and in your church and tear them down in prayer. Speak to the ungodly walls in our culture and tear them down in prayer, in prayer. Your words, when spoken at the right place and in the right time with authority, have power. They have the power to change the future, your future, your child's future, your family's future, the world's future. (laughs) Sometimes I'll start to preach. Sometimes, you know, look, I'm not going to lie. I feel I feel a little bit like Mel Gibson and Braveheart, like I'm like I'm on a horse and I've got some blue paint smeared across my face. Some of you need some blue paint. Yeah. Yeah, whatever your child is going through, whether it is, you know, ungodly influences from peers or identity issues, sexuality issues, promiscuity, pornography, fear, anxiety, mental illness, physical illness, learning disabilities, eating disorders, substance abuse and addiction or or some other kind of abuse, whatever is happening or has happened in your child's life, smear some blue paint on your face and go to war. Speak life into confusion and the doubt and the fear and the addiction and the lies. Speak life into the sickness. Speak life over your child. Speak life into your home. Speak life into your community. Speak life into our culture, into our world. Do our words have the power to change the future? (laughs) You bet they do. If our words are backed with the word of God and the will of God, They can change everything for the better. So speak to the wall, whatever wall your child is facing, and command it to come down in the name of Jesus. I hope you feel some hope stirring within you, moms and dads. Yeah, you know, it's getting dark out there. But the darkness makes the light shine all the more brightly. The lies cannot silence the truth? Not if we keep speaking it. <sighs> now, in the next episode, I think I'm, I'm going to give you some guidelines for challenging our culture. I think, you know, yeah, I may change my mind because that's the prerogative of a woman, which I define scientifically, by the way, based on biology as being a person who possesses two X chromosomes and has a uterus and ovaries and who is uniquely designed by God, to partner with a man, my husband, to bring life into the world and to nurture that life as a mother. You know, you don't have to be a mother to be a woman, 
but you do have to be a woman to be a mother, and I'm proud to be one, and I'm so proud of all you papas out there as well. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. That's Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. That is a fitting note to end on, my friends. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I want to thank you for joining me today. Look, I know there are a lot of things you could be listening to right now, and I really appreciate that you took this time to spend with me. I hope you will join me for my next podcast when we take aim at some aspect of our culture that threatens to derail our parenting and steal our kids' faith. If you enjoyed this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World, would you consider telling a friend and sharing it on social media and giving it a good review over on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and following me on Facebook and Instagram? Oh, oh, and maybe you could say that Christian Parent Crazy World is the best podcast you've ever heard in your entire life. Uh, just a thought. Uh, And be sure to check out my website, which is katherineseegers.com. That's Catherine with a C. I have lots of articles and resources there that will help you on your parenting journey. And if you subscribe, I will be sure to send you some really cool free stuff and notify you of future podcasts, articles, and blogs. I want to end this and every episode with a word of encouragement. God gave you your kids, your specific kids for a reason. That's because you hold the key to unlocking who God created them to be. We'll see you next time. Christian Parent Crazy World is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. To hear more from Katherine Seegers, visit her site, katherineseegers.com. If you enjoyed this episode, would you take a minute and leave us a rating and review in your podcast app? It really does help us connect to more listeners like you. A special thanks to Kelly Gibbons, Stephen Sanders, and Stephen McGarvey for their production and editing on this episode. You can find more podcasts like this over at lifeaudio.com.